Hey Ninja lovers, I'm your host Love Ninja and I welcome you to my channel, a place where we talk about dating and relationships and flirting and sex and everything in between using personality theories such as the Myers-Briggs system or the MBTI as it's popularly known and the Enneagram system. Um, so this week I want to talk to you about the INTJ personality type and how they flirt. So, um, who are the INTJs? Um, they have some of the sexiest brains out there, let me tell you that, uh, with sizzling, sizzling gray matter. But uh, let's define them um, with the Myers-Briggs system because that's what this channel is all about. So, INTJs are introverts, right? So, that's the capital I, um, the first letter of four-letter code INTJ, that's what it stands for, introversion. Um, so what is introversion? Fascinating question. Um, so there are multiple theories uh, to define introversion, but the one that I like to run with is that introverts are somehow very cautious about the energy that they expend um, in the external environment of people and objects. Now, how does that translate to plain speak is that introverts get super, super drained um, making small talk, uh, schmoozing with random strangers, um, talking about the weather or um, uh, their day at work. So uh, that's not how INTJs roll, um, right? Uh, they like having super deep conversations and that's, that's part of the introversion. Uh, which is they retreat into their heads a lot and they explore their inner world of um, thoughts and ideas and their perceptions. Um, so that's the INTJs and um, I'm an INFP. Um, so I share the same letter I with the INTJ of my four letter code, which means that I'm also an introvert and I also get super mega drained by small talk. Um, and I'm always pulling inside of my head and I am perpetually lost in my imagination, um, just kind of exploring my own feelings, um, my moods. And um, when I'm with you, I'm not really with you. I could be in Neverland um, looking for my Peter Pan. So, um, what makes me an expert here to discuss the nuances of how INTJs flirt? Well, um, till date, I have encountered three INTJs, um, capital R, romantically. And let me tell you that the, the attraction has been explosive, um, like dropping sodium in water, right? Um, and... Also, I just want to caveat uh, my content by saying that I it's not my intention to stereotype all of the INTJs and any of the observations or the patterns of behavior that I talk about today are just solely based on my observation um, um, of the INTJ men that I have dated. So every INTJ is different as is every INFP. Again, so this is my subjective um, uh, view of um, how INTJs flirt. So, um, also I'm going to let you in on a secret is that I'm attracted to INTJs a lot of the time um, and I love them. <laughs> um, so, let's get right into the deeds, uh, shall we? So, how do INTJs flirt, right? Um, I don't want to disappoint you but I'm just going to drop this truth bomb on you right off the bat, is that INTJs do not flirt, um, at least not in the conventional sense, right? They're not going to write you cheesy pickup lines, um, although they could depending on their maturity levels, and they're not going to smooth talk you, but they could. Uh, but it takes them a while to get there, right? And... Um, so how do they flirt? They have this very unconventional style of flirting, which is they kind of psychoanalyze you, right? You heard me, right? 
uh, they uh, want to get inside. They want to push into your mind. Okay. And they want to um, unearth all of those secrets, those embarrassing truths uh, that you have um, hidden or buried deep inside of yourself. So they want to pull these truths out. So either you offer them of your own volition, which means that they make you super mega comfortable um, and you kind of open up with them or they extract these truths by asking you a lot of questions and that's how they flirt. Um, so they ask you questions, they get to know your inner motivations, your desire, um, your fears, uh, what your pain points are, um, that type of thing. So it's, it's a very intense cerebral experience and you don't even realize it that when you're engaging with the INTJ, they're actually trying to get to your nub. Um, sort of know uh, the map to your soul, right? <laughs> um, so they want to know every bit about you, uh, every inch of your dark black soul. Uh, so it is an intense experience and this is what you get when you uh, start flirting with an INTJ. So secondly, how do they flirt? So um, again, this is probably very generic and it could apply to a lot of personality types out there is that the INTJ would uh, spend a lot of time getting to know you, right? So they would shower all of this attention and constantly engage you in conversation. Um, so that's a good sign that the INTJ is into you, right? And why why does the context matter here is that INTJs are not very people oriented like us INFPs are uh, we are affiliative we derive a lot of pleasure from forging new social bonds um, finding these new connections um, even though we don't um, actively make an effort um, or put in the effort to make these new connections but when they come along our way we are invested because we find happiness uh, from getting to know people. But that's not how INTJs work exactly, right? They're very pragmatic. And they're in fact more introverted than the INFPs in the sense that they don't like to insert themselves in other people's problems. It's too much drama, right? And this, it, it's very involving, very exacting. And INTJs are very careful about the energy that they expend, like I said. And uh, they're always busy working on some projects uh, because productivity is sexy. Um, but that's not to say that INTJs are not procrastinators. They could certainly be procrastinators. But chances are that if um, they're leaving everything aside, um, all of their introspection, they're giving it all up, their introspection or their work um, or their projects and pulling you into conversation, um, spending time on you uh, because they don't like being frivolous about uh, the time that they spend. Um, so if they're doing that, then they definitely like you. And again, this is a way to tell that they're flirting with you, right? So uh, that's the second way you can tell that the INTJ is into you. Now, I'm going to backtrack here a little bit and explain how this would play out in a, um, a dating situation. Um, like, let's say you met them on an app, right? And you're complete strangers. So how does this play out? So typically the INTJ would, um, would probably make the first move. Um, and send their interest along um, after they have gone through your profile and uh, you know something caught their attention uh, from your profile maybe your pictures or your prompts or whatever right so the INTG would make um, their first move and the INTG would let you know right off the bat that they like you um, because they don't like wasting a lot of time, right? And they have a very direct style of communication. Um, but they're not very in your face like ENTJs. 
which is that they do need some time to like warm up to you as well but they don't um, mince their words they're very clear very direct uh, their way of uh, communication is again a stark contrast contrast to how infps uh, communicate because we tend to be very informative right that's our style we would talk around a topic um, that's not to say that we cannot be direct but that's not our preference right so the intj would let you know that they like you uh, they want to go out on a date with you um, and so that's how the communication would um, transpire between you and the um, intj and INTJs are very desirous, let me tell you that. Uh, they spend an awful lot of time figuring out uh, what they like and what they want. And once they have a clear vision of um, what they're looking for, they just go all in, right? Which means that they cut out all the distractions around them and themselves and they have tunnel vision. So that's how they operate. And that could be, again, very sexy for you as an INFP because um, you like to be wanted and the INTJ gives you that because they're very clear about what they like and what they want and who they want. So again, um, coming back to how they flirt. So you get an invitation into their cave, um, the cave being a reference to their mind, right? And you walk in inside the cave and it's dark and it's mysterious uh, because that's how INTJs are. Uh, they're mysterious and they don't, uh, they're not an open book. They're very private individuals. They're guarded. Um, they don't let people inside very easily, right? So this is a nice, sexy place to be in um, um, because there's, there's a lot you can expect once you're inside the cave, uh, the entrance of the cave. So how can you tell that the INTJ likes you? So um, you receive the invitation to the cave and the INTJ from here on out wants to get to know you, right? So uh, they, the way they do it is they either ask you questions about uh, what you're interested in, um, the topics that you follow closely or passionately. And once you let them know what you like, they're going to ask you a lot of follow-up questions. And the questions could be such a tease, right? Um, because they would, they would sort of challenge you and ask you, like, why do you like... Um, this particular philosophy that you subscribe to, they really genuinely want to know if um, how deep you are into studying um, or following whatever you believe in, right? Uh, they're looking for depth. And um, like I said, um, they're super hungry for information. They're like sponges and they want to soak in all this information from you, right? So, um, so yeah, so they, they want to get to know your thoughts. They're hungry for your thoughts. So as an INFP, um, that could seem fascinating uh, when you're asked to explain yourself because typically we don't enjoy explaining ourselves. Whatever we like, we like it subjectively. And uh, that's how the INFP mind works. It's like we're constantly checking in with ourselves and trying to figure out if you know, how does this make me feel? How does going to this museum make me feel? How does this painting make me feel? What emotions does it evoke within me? Um, can I can I relate to the themes uh, that this painting um, portrays? Uh, have I experienced something in the past? So these are the types of questions that are constantly looping in our heads. And we are trying to answer those in our heads. But once we like something, um, we don't expect to be questioned by others because um, it's it's again it's a very draining process where we have to um, explain something that is so interest based right it's it's not factual it's not uh, rational it's it's just a very subjective experience um, um, experiencing all these moods or these emotions so the INTJs would um, 
would ask you a lot of questions, um, trying to engage you in conversation and uh, they would start debating with you. Okay, that's again another way to tell that the INTJ likes you is when they start asking you follow-up questions and if they're not convinced with your answers, uh, there could be a lot of counter arguments and a lot of sarcasm um, and a lot of conceit, right? So uh, this is what you can expect when you're engaging with the INTJ and um, if it's not about your interests, then the INTJ would start talking about their interests and they would state their opinions as facts. Let me tell you that. And that's how their confidence sings and they serenade you, the audience, the INFP, right? Um, they would present these controversial, uh, unpopular uh, points of view uh, to... It's, it's not to get a rise out of you. It's, it's, just, it's just that INTJs are so skeptical about everything, right? Um, all, all of their comments, their, uh, the philosophy that they believe in, there's always a lot of skepticism going on. Uh, and they're walking x-rays as opposed to us INFPs uh, who wear rose-colored glasses, right? Uh, so... And they wouldn't withhold any disagreement, let me tell you that. Because to an INTJ, agreeableness is a state worse than death. So uh, so they would give you these hot takes and, um, and then wait for you, right? Uh, anticipate you, wait for your reaction to whatever it is that they have said. Now, uh, just keep in mind that this experience could play out like the INTJ is this college professor and is sitting you down for a lecture, a monologue, where they go on and on about um, their beliefs, right? And these monologues serve a threefold purpose. Firstly, they let you know the topics that the INTJ cares about, okay? And secondly, um, they want to know if you can tolerate their cutting truths because at, by this point in time, you'd know damn well that INTGs do not like crafting an image. Um, at least when it comes to discussing what they believe in, uh, they lay their thoughts bare. Um, they aren't looking for you to agree with their thoughts. Um, they just want you to know that this is what they subscribe to, right? Um, so yeah, because they like you, they want you. Uh, they want to know if you can tolerate uh, their opinions um, and these cutting truths. And thirdly, uh, they also uh, want to know um, your opinions, right? So they're hungry for your thoughts. They're const. They're like thought vampires, I guess. <laughs> so um, they want to sing those fangs in, and they want to know um, your opinion, and also. Um, they're, they're checking to see how smart you are, right? That's how, that, that's how this experience could make you feel. Um, and as an INFP, I mean, it could be, a, could be an exhausting, excruciating process where you have to um, basically explain to the INTJ. It could almost feel like a challenge that you have to rise to, like rise to the occasion and uh, you have to convince the INTJ about um, how differently you see uh, the world as opposed to them. But you couldn't be more wrong because uh, let me tell you that INTJs are somehow already convinced um, in their views about life. And it's difficult for them to change their minds. Um, they, they could have come across as really stubborn individuals, okay? Um, and I don't mean to say that all INTJs are this way, just the ones that I've interacted with. It's, it's always been the case that, you know, that um, I would have to sit down and explain to them um, uh, my opinions and they wouldn't be convinced. So do you even have to try is the question. And the answer would be yes, because... Um, because this whole process is just so seductive, even though it's exhausting, right? Because it's like you're trying to reach inside of your mind 
um, and you're trying to explain things, you're trying to spar with the INTJ and there's so much conflict, so much tension and uh, that's part of the seduction, that's how it works and it's just exhilarating because if the stakes are high then the rewards are worth it, let me tell you that because um, it's just the language that they use, uh, the questions that they come up with, um, kind of like they kind of keep you on the edge. <laughs> um, so it's it's just it's just very exhilarating, like I said. And uh, INTJs are somehow masterful with uh, with with abstract language, right? Uh, they use a lot of metaphors and uh, analogies and that could set fire to your loins. Um, I mean, that's that's been my experience. So um, yeah, so that's, that's part of the seduction and uh, that's why, that's the pull between you and the INTJ. Okay, um, again, so when you've sparred with the INTJ, that means you've reached level two of the cave, which is the twilight zone, right? So there's all this sparring going on, this mental gymming, it's stimulating, extremely, extremely sti stimulating. And that's what you get with the INTJ right from the beginning. It's always a cerebral experience, right? So uh, at, at level two, um, you have probably spent days or hours um, interacting with, with the INTJ and the INTJ feels very comfortable with you. And that's when um, they start telling you about themselves, right? So show and tell, that's another way uh, that the INTJ would flirt is that they would open up about their childhood um, some embarrassing, painful memories, um, um, some secrets, uh, a lot of uh, sharing about uh, the, some personal stories about their family members, uh, things of that nature. And again, the context here is really important. Any type could do this, right? But the context here is important because INTJs, like I said, they don't trust people easily, right? And trust is one of the most important relationship needs for an INTJ. So when you get to this stage and the INTJ starts talking about themselves, uh, you'd know damn well that they're into you because they wouldn't do this with a random stranger, right? Uh, so that's another way to tell that the INTJ likes you. Again, in the twilight zone, what else can happen is that, um, let's say you bring up a, a problem or an issue that you're facing, uh, probably at work or your own personal life, and you share it with Mr. INTJ. The INTJ would sit back, listen to you, and they would come up with a solution to fix your problem. Again, this is how they flirt, right? Uh, they love fixing, um, fixing stuff. They like coming up with solutions to fix your problem. So this is again another way uh, that they flirt is through problem solving. So the more complicated the problem, even better. Like talk about uh, a past relationship that you've had and uh, how you're still coping with, uh, with whatever happened in the past. And the INTJ would probably come up, come up with a, uh, a list or an, uh, a list of instructions or things that you can follow so you can get over your ex, right? And um, that sort of thing really excites them. So if, if they're problem solving uh, with you, for you, then they're flirting with you. Again, um, not a very conventional way uh, of flirting, but this is how they flirt. Okay. So I've gone over all of uh, the ways that the INTJ would flirt with you um, uh, in a dating situation. And now I'm gonna go over some bonus material, right? Um, about what happens in the INTJ INFP relationship um, after you've been seduced um, by reaching level two of the cave, which is the twilight zone. So when you reach level three, which is the dark zone um, as an INFP, 
you interacted with the INTJ again for days or hours or weeks and you have got feelings for them, right? Um, and there are all these questions you have to grapple with as an INFP. The first question is you can't help but think that you've been somehow manipulated by the INTJ because they spent an awful lot of time getting to know you, your fears, your motivation and um, what turns you on, what turns you off. Um, and this is valuable information, right? So how are they going to use this information um, against you when things sour between you and the INTJ? right uh, because they have dismantled your psyche um, because when they let you inside their cave and uh, secondly again my observation that the INTJ INFP uh, relationship why it gets so ex I mean what is the reason that you're drawn to the INTJs in the first place right so here's my analysis it's that as an INFP, we as INFPs, we like to be impressed. And here is Mr. INTJ um, trying to impress you with all of the uh, knowledge that they have gathered, all the reference materials, all the sources of information um, that they have gathered from Wikipedia or Quora or from books. And uh, so there's this information glut and you love it as an INFP and uh, you want to be impressed and they're ready to impress you. So that's part of the appeal. And the other piece is that um, INTJs kind of let you know from the beginning that they're very selective about the people uh, they let inside their inner circle. And as an INFP, you've You've always felt different um, all your life that you don't fit in with conventional society. So when the INTJ chooses you, um, it kind of appeals to your elitism, right? It's like you've gotten membership into this elite club um, and you're in their cabal. So again, that's part of the appeal. And but thirdly, you, you kind of have to ask yourself this question, right? Um, as an INFP, you have emotional needs. And even though the attraction from, with the INTJ is explosive, magnetic, polar, and so sexual um, from the beginning, you have emotional needs. And INTJs do not prioritize emotions over rational thinking, um, which is kind of flipped for us as INFPs because we inhabit our emotions. We prioritize our emotional well-being um, over rational thinking, right? Um, so when you have all of these needs, I mean, how, how can the INTJ meet those needs, right? Um, so let me just give you a scenario uh, where you have reached your wits ends and you want to talk to the INTJ and went to them about your problems. And the INTJ sits back, listens to you, absorbs all of that information in and is trying to process a solution to fix your problem. And they offer that solution to you and this could be the, the last straw to break your back truly because chances are that when you have come to the INTJ and you're venting um, your problems and your frustration, um, you're already exhausted, right? And the last thing you want to do is um, reflect on their solution, um, expend more mental energy uh, on that and expend more physical energy in implementing that solution, right? Uh, taking action. And that could be anathema to you as an INFP uh, when, when you're sitting there crying and you just want a hug. You don't want a solution. You don't want a fix, right? So how long can this attraction between you and the INTJ uh, truly last when you've ruled out of their arms and their beds? That's a question you have to ask yourself as an INFP. 
So that's my deep dive into uh, how INTJs and uh, how INTJs flirt and how a relationship between an INTJ and INFP could pan out. And if you're an INFP, I would love, love, love to hear from you um, about your hits and misses with, uh, with the INTJ in your life. Um, and so please drop me a comment below. Um, just a line would do or several lines. And if you don't want that information out in the public and you're super shy like me, then feel free to drop me an email on emaillovenninja at gmail.com. So that's emaillovenninja at gmail.com. And um, as always, um, if you found this information uh, useful, please subscribe to my channel. Um, don't be complacent. Love you, love me, love ninja.